friend, I, the devil comes against us with everything that he possibly can get his hands on. He tries to come against us with worry and fret. He tries to come against us with depression and anxiety. He tries to get us to live defeated. He tries to bring sickness on our bodies. He tries to invade our minds. He tries his best to discourage, discourage our hearts. The, the devil will, listen, we preach Wednesday night that we've got an enemy, amen? And he's got a purpose. His purpose is to destroy us. His purpose is to grind us into powder. But the Bible says that King Hezekiah built a wall between him and the devil. He built something between him and the devil to keep the devil at bay. We gathered in the office this morning, a bunch of the men, and we gathered hands and we prayed. And I prayed this morning and I asked that the devil would be defeated. I prayed that he would be kept away from this place this morning. That the Spirit of God would come and be among us. And I don't know about you, friend, but I feel the Spirit of the Lord in my heart this morning. I am thankful. I am thankful that He is holy. I am thankful that He has a beautiful name. I am thankful that I called on that name and He saved me. I'm thankful that I've called on that name and He has healed me. I'm thankful that I have called on the beautiful name of Jesus and He has answered prayer for me. There are some of you here today, you're living in defeat. You live that way every day. You play in games with God. You play in religion. You play in church. You think you got a relationship with the living God, but all you got is religion. All you got is something dead on the inside. All you got is your name written on a book at a church somewhere that you say you belong to. Some of you are believing that your thoughts and that your ideas are going to get you to heaven. Oh, Brother Tim, I ain't all about that church stuff. I ain't all about that spiritual stuff. What are you going to do when you stand before a living God and you got to give an account for the life you lived? Amen? Well, Brother Tim, you don't understand. I've been done wrong and I'm mad. Well, you better get over over it before you stand before God. I've got all of this unforgiveness in my heart. Well, you better start forgiving before you stand before God. I got all of this that's happened to me in life. You better give it to Jesus and get over it before you stand before God. Well, I've got this amount of money in the bank. I hope that helps you when you stand before God, but it's not. You don't understand, Brother Tim. My last name is this, and I've got this position down at the bank. I've got this position down at the factory or whatever. My friend, that ain't going to get you past the funeral home. It may cause somebody to stand up and say some nice things about you at your funeral, but that's all it's going to get you. Amen? It ain't going to get you into heaven. Some of you are playing games with God, and you better stop. Some of you have got your hope in other things other than Jesus. You better get your soul saved, get your heart right, and get your name on the Lamb's book of life, or you're going to hell. Amen? Say, Brother Tim, is that what the, devil, what the Lord uh, was going to have you to preach? I don't know. That's what he's putting in my heart this morning. Amen? They're upstairs looking at notes saying, I don't see any of that. Well, I didn't either until I got here. Amen? You better stop playing games with God. There was a rich young man that came to Jesus and said, What can I do that I can inherit eternal life? See, he was just a young man. I believe he'd probably inherited a lot of things. He got rich very early in life. And maybe, maybe his daddy or his grandpa had gotten rich and, and left him all of that stuff. So he goes to Jesus and said, what can I do to inherit uh, eternal life? Jesus said, give up all of this stuff that you put your hope and your trust and your faith in and come and be a disciple of mine and follow me. Amen? Whatever you're putting your hope and your trust in this morning, you need to lay it aside. You need to give it up. This past week we got word that a, a friend of ours, their home had burnt. In a matter of moments, everything they had worked for, everything they had their hope and their trust in, everything, every earthly possession that they had on this side of eternity was nothing but a pile of ash. My friend, you may wake up in the morning and not even have the health and strength to get out of bed. You may find your... Listen... You tied your shoes this morning. The undertaker may untie them tonight. You hear what I'm telling you? You got up this morning with thoughts of what you were going to do today, but God may have different thoughts for you. Derek, come back to the piano, or Keith, whoever was playing this morning. Somebody come back to the piano for a moment. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Somebody playing games with God. Somebody here this morning, your heart's not right with God. And he's just impressing on my heart this morning, friend. You need to be challenged. 
You're playing games with God. You've got church religion. You're living off of some religious experience years ago, but to be honest with God, right now you're lost as a ball in high weeds. If Jesus was to come in the clouds, my friend, the, re- the church would be called away and you'd be left behind. If you had to stand before God right now, you don't have enough Jesus in you to get you past the judgment seat. Friend, you better know that you know that you know. Oh, Brother Tim, I I come to church as often as I can. This church ain't going to get you to heaven. I think God's given us a good church. I'd I'd rather, listen, if I was looking for a church, if I wasn't the pastor of this church, if I was looking for a church, I'd go to church here. I think we got a good church. This church ain't going to get you to heaven. Singing songs about Jesus ain't going to get you to heaven. Paying your tithe ain't going to get you to heaven. Friend, you better know that you've been washed in the blood of Jesus. That you've confessed your sin, trusted Him as your personal Savior, and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're saved this morning. Because, friend, there's going to be a lot of people stand before Jesus, and He's going to say, I don't even know who you are. Depart from me. I don't believe there's any sadder words in all of God's Word than to think that you got it and then stand before God one day and say, but we cried, Lord, Lord. And He's going to look at you and say, I don't even know who you are. Depart from me. Friend, if you don't know Jesus this morning, you need to get on your face before God and repent of your sin. You, listen, right now, right now, you'd get out of your seat and you'd come and fall on your face before God in this altar and say, God, forgive me. God, wash me of my sins. Forgive me of putting my trust in religion and other things that hopefully get me to heaven one day and get your heart right with God. Friend, if there's somebody here like that this morning, you need to come. You need to get your heart. Somebody playing games with God. God's been dealing with some of y'all's hearts about a spiritual need in your life and you need to come this morning. Some of you Christians need to renew the commitment you've made to God in the past. You need to make some things right with God right now while we wait. Right now, God's speaking to somebody's heart. God bless these that are coming, somebody else. You need to know that you know that you know while others are coming, somebody else. You need to come. Maybe some of you this morning, you know your heart's right with God, but you need to just come. Put your arm around some of these that are here this morning, and you're going to pray for them. Some of you brothers and sisters in Christ, you just come and pray with these. Friend, if you feel the Spirit speaking to your heart this morning, don't ignore it. God's moving, God's speaking to hearts, and you need to respond to it today. Are there others? Are there others? God bless these that are coming. Others are still coming. We pray the Holy Spirit just have its way. Oh, but Brother Tim, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't. But God surely does. Somebody else? You're backslidden on God. You need to come this morning and rededicate your life to the Lord. The Lord saved you many years ago, but you've not held up your end of the deal. You need to come to the Lord. God bless. Others are still coming. Somebody else. Some of you have put your hope and trust in church and and all that stuff for all these years, but you've never truly been saved by the grace of God. Friend, you don't know what you're missing. He said, whom the Spirit has set free is free indeed. And the Lord wants to set you free this morning. The Lord wants to save your soul. He wants to make a reservation in eternity for you. He wants to have a relationship with you this morning. Friend, others are still coming. Will you come? The devil will attack you. The devil will accuse you. The devil will do everything he can to try to nail you down and keep you where you're at. Friend, let the Lord set you free this morning. Stop listening to the devil and open up your mind and your heart to the voice of God and listen to what he's telling you this morning. Stop listening to tradition. Stop listening to the culture. 
and start listening to the voice of Almighty God. Others are still coming. Some of you prayer partners come and join around with others that are still praying. They need to know somebody is praying with them and praying for them. You got something in your heart this morning that ought not be there, you need to get rid of it. You got something you need to confess to God, today's the day to do it. Brother Carrington and others come to be anointed. You got a sickness in your body, come and lay it before the Lord. You're carrying a burden in your life, give it to God. Others are still coming. Brother Tim, I don't know what to do about that that I'm feeling in my heart this morning. You need to respond to it. You need to obey it. You need to do what God's leading you to do. Some of you, your life is so full of bitterness and animosity and hatred toward other people. But you're feeling the knocking of God on your heart this morning. And you need to give it up. You need to confess it. Give it to God. the Spirit of God's moving, friend. Will you come? We've talked for months about praying big. Stop praying for little little things. We, we ought to pray about the little things. It's not what I'm saying. But we need to pray for big things. And when we pray for bigger things, we need to expect God to do bigger things. Prepare our hearts and our minds and our lives for God to do bigger things. And while the Spirit is speaking to your heart, will you come? you lift your heads and look this way this morning folks are still praying I told you about how we gathered there in the office a while ago and we're going to have to find a bigger place to pray because my office was full of men calling on God this morning as I was praying I just confessed to God I said you know if I got what I deserved I'd go to hell how many of you with me on that one if God gave me what I deserved I'd go to hell God's given me so far, so much more than anything I, I could ever deserve of or dream of. I didn't deserve Jesus dying on a cross for my sin. My life is my life is like anybody else. The Bible said that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But I'm glad God didn't give me what I deserved. But He gave me grace and He gave me mercy. And He came into my life. And my friend, that's what He can do for you. You say, I'm a good person this morning, Brother Tim. Listen, I, I'm not going to debate that. You might be one of the finest men or women in this community. That's not going to get you to heaven. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There was a man by the name of Nicodemus. The Bible said he was a master teacher of law. He was one of the most moral, righteous men that you could ever imagine. Well-educated, raised up in the temple. 
Jesus came, or he came to Jesus at night and said, What must I do? And Jesus said, You must be born again. He said, What do you mean? Can I get her, enter my mother's womb a second time? He was thinking in earthly terms, and Jesus was talking on heavenly terms. Jesus said, I'm not talking about a physical birth born of water. I'm talking about a spiritual birth where you're born of the Spirit. He said, what must I do? And Jesus said, you must be born again. He didn't say you ought to be. He said, you must be. If you plan on going to heaven, if you plan on spending eternity in glory, you must be born again. Amen? And I hope this morning when you walk out those doors here in a little bit that everybody in this room can say that I have been born again. Not of water, but of the Spirit. Washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, knowing that everything is well between me and my God. But friend, if you can't say that, why would you leave in that condition? When God has done everything possible this side of heaven to save your soul, why would you leave without Him today? Holy Spirit, He's playing that song. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Keith, would you just play Amazing Grace this morning? And while we sit quietly and reverently and we sing one verse of Amazing Grace, friend, if you need to come, actually, let's stand. Let's stand this morning. Let's give reverence to the Lord. Friend, if you need to come, one verse. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. question I want to ask you to bow your heads just one more time because I want people to have privacy around them you'd say brother Tim I feel God in this place this morning but I know my heart's not right with God and I want to ask you to pray for me nobody will see you but me and the Lord and friend I don't take this lightly I, I, I don't go out and tell other people your name and your business but you know this morning you're not right with God and you want me to pray for you and by lifting your hand you're asking the whole church to pray for your spiritual need this morning would you lift your hand this morning God bless you 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 and you and you friend listen why would you leave this place lost why you know your heart's not right why would you leave today? You don't understand how hard it is as a pastor to close a service like this when the power of God is moving and know that people, they know in their own heart they're lost and they won't trust Christ as their Savior. That's hard to do. Friend, I'm going to ask you one more time. Would you come? I'll meet you here. God bless. God bless some of you men. Come and pray with this one that's coming this morning, right now. God bless this one that's coming. Some of you men, pray with this one that's coming down over here on my left. Somebody else? Two men right here. Two men. One of them a young man coming this morning. Somebody else? Why would you leave lost? What is it that this world is worth losing your soul over? 